What's the word, y'all? Y'all know what's going on, man. We are back with another BR article. Thank you for all the love on yesterday's video. Um, I didn't expect that much positive feedback for something so controversial. Uh, so thank you for that. If you missed that video, go back and watch it. I thought it was really fun to make. Um, so now we got an article. One NBA player, every NBA team needs to target this offseason. So this could, if you ask me, I think this has to do with like trades. Uh, this has to do with free agents. Again, this is my first time reacting to these, first time seeing these. So leave a like, subscribe, and I'll give my opinions. This is by a new person, by the way. Um, Mandela Namaste. I've not read one of their articles before. So let's see what we get into, man. I'm so used to the other guys, and maybe this is better. Maybe it's worse. Only time will tell. So the cover picture is Luca with um Dragic, which makes sense. We've actually talked about that on this channel before. First one, we have Derek White. We've talked about this on the channel before, but I think this will be a, a good fit. Good defender. Long side Trey Young. Always going to be something that they're going to need when you have Trey Young as your star player. So uh, Derek White should be a guy that they target, but obviously that would have to do be via trade because I don't think he's unrestricted. Is he the trade or if he is a free agent, it is a restricted free agent. Um, so I understand that. I understand that. They said that they want to go a little bit deeper, though. They want like a nice wing veteran player to come to their team to help them make that playoff push. So maybe they're thinking DeMar. That would be interesting. Miles Turner. Okay, I, I feel like there might be a little thing going on here where, like, a lot of the things that we see in this article is something that we've already talked about here on this channel. Miles Turner is the one that comes up all the time with the Boston Celtics, so I don't need to, to go on it any further. This is one I have not seen, though. Brooklyn Nets, CJ McCollum. Um, CJ would work because he is the type of guy, I mean, we've seen it throughout the course of his career, he can play very well off the ball. And it's kind of what they're looking for at this moment. Karis LeVert, Spencer Dinwiddie, these are all very good NBA players, but they are ball dominant. And CJ, though, he can be a ball dominant guard. We saw that when Damian Lillard was injured. He does play very well off the ball as well. So he would be a nice fit alongside them. And I guess in this scenario, um, a package featuring Karis and Spencer Dinwiddie in a first round pick. That hey hey that's a nice little package if you're going throwing in CJ but breaking up CJ and Dame just, it just don't feel right at the end of the day it just don't I feel like they've been together for a hundred years and it got him a conference finals appearance at least you know what I'm saying next Matres Harrell um there was reports earlier this morning that the the Charlotte Hornets really like Double O at a USC um I'm not gonna pronounce his name but you know who I'm talking about you know what I'm saying so if that's what they want to do then paying Matres Harrell doesn't really make sense. Um, if they're going big, because I've ho also heard Wiseman attached to them if he falls to number three and he's not taken by the Warriors. So um, I think they should probably, if they can, go younger instead of signing a contract in Montrez Harrell, who did not look good in the bubble. And I think there's a ceiling to Montrez Harrell, this high energy guy, and seeing him play 20, 30 minutes a game may be a little bit difficult. I would say they should not target Montrez Harrell because what the heck does that do for them? I don't, I don't, I don't really know. So the next team we're going to have is my Chicago Bulls, Daniel House. Perfect. I'm super happy about this. I'm glad they didn't give us the go after a center. We need wing depth. And guess who's a wing? Daniel House. At this point, I'll take so many different wings on the on the market right now. Because we just need wing depth because Otto Porter, Chandler Hudson, these are guys that have struggled to stay healthy throughout the course of their careers. And just having a guy, if it is Daniel House, boom, it's him. But I think they'd have to trade for him, right? Let's go. Um, Derrick Jones Jr., another guy I saw associated with the Bulls. And, you know, Cleveland Cavaliers wouldn't be bad either. They are also a team that was like, hey, we want to make the playoffs soon. Which is like, I understand. Everybody wants to make the playoffs. But let's, can we just, let's, how about we hit on draft picks, Cavs? How about we do that? You know what I'm saying? I like Kyler Sexton as a draft pick. I just don't know if Darius Garland was the best one alongside him. But bringing in Derrick Jones Jr. doesn't really do much for that trying to make the playoffs thing. I mean, you take a flyer on a guy that's, what, 24 and play good minutes here and there? 23, I'm sorry, and play good minutes here and there. Goran Dragic, we've talked about this before. This makes sense a lot to have a, a, a backup to Luka that can come in and score the ball. I like him alongside him as well if they wanted to play duo instead of just, like, having one on the bench or one in the game. I think they fit well together on the court. I think it's a nice match made. I say I say the same thing about Goran Dragic and uh, Trey Young. Goran Dragic can just play. That's Simple. Simple. Uh, Bradley Beal, yes, make that trade, man. Make that trade. You were a conference finalist this year, and beautiful. Mwah. But, like, getting going all in on Bradley Beal will make it so much better for the Western Conference, I would say. And it's already a deep Western Conference. The only problem is uh, the District of Columbia is not really looking to trade Bradley Beal. And there's footage that came out the other day, and John Wall was looking nice in the open run. Now, the open runs don't be having real defense play, but P.J. Tucker was there. So, at least a little bit of defense was played in that open run. I, I don't think they trade Bradley Beal this offseason. Christian Wood. 
bring them back. Why not? Well, like me and my guys had a conversation about this on our podcast literally today about Christian Wood. And I think there, there are a group of people that believe that Christian Wood, the 20 points per game and wait, what are 20? Three points per game, 10 rebounds, 56% from the field and 40% from three. Um, people see that as a fluke because it was only like 10, 15 games of the season. But I also see people on the other side like, man, this is something he could really be. And if you're the Detroit Pistons, it doesn't matter if it's a fluke at this moment. Just just try it. Just, just resign him, bro. What else do you have? Because if it's real and you let him walk to another team, then you look stupid. Again. So bring him back. Um, Paul Millsap for the Warriors, yikes. That would be, I would, Paul Millsap alongside the Warriors would be good. Like, having a closing lineup of, um, at this point with their roster would be Steph, Clay, Wiggs, Dre, Millsap. That sounds dangerous. I would like that. Um, it's just whether or not Paul Millsap was signed for, like, the mid-level exception or vet minimum or something like that. But Paul Millsap might be a type of guy. I mean, a man has been playing for a thousand years, and he just wants a ring at this point. And if he looks at it like that, the Golden State Warriors might be a place to go to and increase their depth and uh, might get him back into a championship contending team. Then we have the Houston Rockets and the Orleans Noel. Yep, get a center. I don't know what Steven Silas has planned for this team, but hopefully it is getting a center and running a center. Because they did have Tyson Chandler. He just didn't run. Uh, Nerlens Noel would be great for them. Pick and roll duo. Uh, James Harden and pick and roll was so good a few years ago, but they had to stop doing that. Obviously, he doesn't bring the five-out aspect to some of the other bigs, but as a guy that can block some shots, high energy, go get some lobs, he is exactly that. I would like that for the Houston Rockets. Chris Boucher for the Indiana Pacers, another big. As discussed earlier, Mouse turned into Monta Sabonis. Don't necessarily make for a clean fit. That is true. So they're trying to say, hey, if you're going to get rid of Miles Turner, bring in Chris Boucher. He's going to block some shots. He's going to shoot some threes. He's 27, which is actually crazy to think about. For my, in my eyes, he's like 23. Because he hasn't really been in the league. But he's been in the G League. He's done this and that. Um, and he spent a few years at college, if I'm not mistaken. I like Chris I like uh, Chris Boucher um, with the Pacers. Eh, they still got Goga, Bad- Goga Badazzi who show, like, flashes. Like, I, they, maybe they just want to bring Goga Badazzi up higher on the um, the depth chart. Clippers making a trade for Steven Adams, huh? Like, what is it, though? What is the trade we're discussing? They don't really say. Because Steven Adams is not a free agent next offseason, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Tr- Tristan Thompson might seem like the obvious pursuit here. That's the guy I would think that they should go after. He's familiar with Los Angeles Clippers. Yep, yep, yep. Instead, let's look at one of the most well-liked players in the entire NBA. That's a fact. I do love me some Steven Adams. With Chris Paul and Gallinari essentially posting farewell messages to OKC, the social medias, the form ability. Yep, yep, yep. But how, though? Despite being a non-shooter, the Kiwi remain vital to OKC's success. But how, though, is something that is not addressed here? I mean, I'm guessing it is possible because the person wouldn't have wrote the article with this without it being there. But I just don't I just don't know what it looks like for them to pull off this trade because I don't think Stephen Adams, Stephen Adams is not afraid this offseason. It's next offseason. Derrick Rose, the Lakers, make it happen. I need Derrick Rose on the contending team. Leave it at that. Two Chicago kids on the same contending team? I might low-key be a Lakers fan if that happens for, for my Western Conference team. Is that a bandwagon? Yes. But they do have two Chicago kids that I dearly love. So, sure, I'll hop on a bandwagon after the cha- after the championship, not before the championship. I want to see Derrick Rose on the contending team nonetheless. If it's the Lakers, if it's Clippers, if it's this or that. I just want him to play meaningful basketball again. That's all. Grizzlies, bring back Anthony Melton. That would be priority number one if I'm the Grizzlies. If you're not a Grizzlies fan, you don't really know the impact Anthony Melton had on this team offensively, mostly defensively. Um, they should make it number one priority to bring him back 100%. Uh, Miami Heat, Drew Holiday. I love Drew Holiday, and having him in the Heat jersey would be deadly, would be disgusting. In addition, trading for 30-year-old Drew Holiday would likely require the franchise to sacrifice at least one of Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, and Kendrick Nunn. Now, if you're asking a Heat fan, I guess that they would be like, bye, Kendrick. If it's picking between one of these three guys to get traded, I feel like most Heat fans would be like, Kendrick, thank you for your all-rookie uh, first team, but you gots to go. Because Tyler Hero's potential is crazy. Duncan Robinson, he sent you to the offense, so you're probably throw, throwing out Kendrick Nunn. Um... But if I'm the Pelicans, I'm not just going to say, okay, we'll take Kendrick Nunn. I'm on one of the other two guys, personally. 
But I do think Miami Heat and Drew Holiday is a nice fit. And, man, would that team be disgusting on the defensive side of the ball. Victor Depot, we talked about this in yesterday's video. If you missed it, I made a whole video about the Bucks and what they should be thinking about this offseason. Victor Depot was mentioned. I think it makes sense. Um, so, I'll, I'll, I like that. Bring back Malik Beasley. He is going through some stuff. So, I don't even know. What, what's the... What's the likelihood that Malik Beasley's on the NBA roster next season with all the stuff that's going on? I don't even know the specifics. I just saw the reports of... So he's doing stuff off the court that I... Not even just NBA players. People just shouldn't do at the end of the day. So, I don't know. Next, we have Brandon Ingram. Bring him back. I keep seeing people trying to figure out if he's the right fit for Zion, which is something you should try to figure out. But that doesn't mean you just let you just let him go and restrict the free agency because you're not sure if he's a fit alone Zion. Bring him back because at the the least, he's still going to be a valuable asset. If you find out that him and Zion don't work well together long term, it is still a first time All Star Brandon Ingram who looked amazing this off season or this regular season. So yes, bring him back. I don't understand the idea of letting him walk in restrict the free agency. That does not make any sense to me. Chris Paul. They want a culture change in New York. Chris Paul will change the culture. He's done it every step of his career. New York wants to get back to winning basketball. Chris Paul has done it at every step of his career, regular season-wise. So, yeah. Um, I could, If you're a Knicks fan and you're like, so you want to stay far away from Chris Paul, I understand that as well. He's an aging point guard with history of being injured. He had one good, successful, non-injury riddled season, and now he's on the top of the world. We don't know if that's really who Chris Paul is at this point. You know, it's a one-year sample size. Also in the season, they got cut short. They got cut short. So, and Chris Paul is literally my favorite player. But I got to keep it a buck. It was just one season. It was just one season. So, um, do I want to pay for this aging point guard who has history of being injured and he has one of the biggest contracts in the league? It's something you got you to weigh. Something you got to weigh when thinking about trading for Chris Paul. Draft picks for OKC, it's not like they already got a 1,000 of them, but sure, keep them going. Um, DeMar DeRozan for the Orlando Magic. I want DeMar DeRozan to play for a team where he's out there competing again. Orlando probably is not it. Sure, they might be the sixth seed instead of the eighth seed of DeMar DeRozan is, is on their team, um, but it's still not it. DeMar DeRozan has become... He has gone from a guy that was widely considered overrated when he was in Toronto to a guy that is severely underrated right now at the Spurs. Um, I like DeMar. Orlando might not be it for me personally, though. Buddy Hill, sure. He's liking all the pictures, saying he want to go to Philly. So, sure, bring him in. But how is the real question. The one that keeps getting thrown around is like Al Horford and some picks. And if that's the case, then sure. But not the Al Horford straight up. That's not going to work. If I'm the if I'm the Kings, I'm not accepting Al Horford straight up for Buddy Hill. That's, that's, lack, that's losing value at the end of the day. Jeremy Grant for the Suns. You could put Jeremy Grant on, like, everything. And you'd be like, yep. Yep, he's just, he, I feel like he's going to be throughout the course of his career. He's, I think he's only 27, 26. Sheesh. Um, he's going to be one of those guys that is just going to be a nice glue guy his entire career until it's over with. Just glue guy, glue guy, glue guy, glue guy, glue, glue, you say that a hundred times fast. You get what I'm saying. Um, then we have Gallinari with the Trailblazers. Gallinari has come out and said that, hey, I'm willing to um, take less money to come go to a team that can help me win a championship, which is admirable. Him added to the Portland Trailblazers would be good. I don't know if that would make them that championship team, maybe. Um, and maybe Gallinari would rather go somewhere else that has a higher potential to win a championship. Bogdanovic for the Kings, they already expressed that they were, they're matching every single thing, so that makes sense. Aaron Gordon for the Spurs, I, I see the swap that you see. Aaron Gordon for DeMar DeRozan, let's make it happen. Uh, Freddie. Should be their number one priority. Yeah, but he's going to get paid. So, some tells me he won't be back. That's just what I'm saying. I don't think he's going to be back. Utah, Justin Holiday, perimeter shooter, 3 and D, perfectly. And Davis Bertez bringing him back. Yeah, Davis Bertez alongside Bradley Beal and John Wall together could be a dangerous pairing. But he's also going to be a guy that's going to get his phone called a bunch. The Latvian laser does not miss. So, I would see him going to a lot of different places. And maybe he just didn't like Washington enough because they were a bad team. Okay, interesting article. Not Mr. or Mrs. Namaste. I'm not completely sure. Thank you for the article. It was fun. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Somebody that's not on this list that you want to see your team target. I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.